Today we've got a very special guest indeed, um, Dr. Jeff Lindsay, who's recently-ish, I think was it 2018, 19? 19. Um, has written the book English After RP, which I've mentioned a few times and have received um, a number of comments uh, praising. Um, and he's very kindly actually come to me rather than making me go, go to him or, you know, it's nicer to have an in-person thing rather than a Zoom thing from time to time, I think. Um, but he's here today to have a little chat about English After RP and about anything else that, that pops into the flow of conversation. So, um, shall we start by... Oh, and he also has a YouTube channel where he's recently re released a very, very nice half an hour-ish long video um, describing why the received pronunciation um, symbols, why the vowel, the vowel system as described... Well, I'm not worried that very well. The vowel system, in in the way that it's normally traditionally presented of southeastern British English, is not fit for purpose. <laughs> um, yeah, our categories. Yeah. Um, so, should we start by sort of having giving a little introduction to English after RP and the broad points about um, maybe some examples of what what is wrong with. Um, older descriptions of RP as applied to modern Southern English. Oh, discrepancies, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I suppose, um, I mean, com complaining about vowel symbols. Um, uh, by the way, thank you for having me. Oh, it's no, very it's wonderful to be here. Wonderful to have thank you. And thank you for the kind words. And it's it's an honour to be on your channel. Oh, thank um, you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, it's two different things to sort of say well I think the vowel symbols the transcription system could be slightly improved and another thing just to say well look this is the physical reality of how people are speaking now mm. and that, that, that's the main thing that the book was trying to do because I think you've got various groups of people out there in the world who want to um, you know know how uh, standard standard accent is um, pronounced non-native speakers, teachers and learners of English and you've also got a lot of theoretical linguists around the world who aren't native speakers mm. and they can only, I mean if they don't have tame native speakers at their disposal they have to uh, rely on what the books tell them. Yeah, so, yeah. and I thought, you know, I knew quite a I, I knew that quite a lot of people that say in linguistics were getting the wrong impression of the facts. So, uh, I thought the physical sounds had drifted far enough away mm. from um, the standard symbols that it was worth telling people how to interpret yeah. those, those, those symbols. And there's other, there's other stuff in there, there's stuff on intonation and stress and that kind yeah. of thing. And I enjoy Some lexical yeah. changes. The intonation stuff is, part, is one of the things that I'm really, I can't find it now, one of the things that I'm very interested in but know pretty much nothing about, I think that there it is, just in case anyone wants to. <laughs> Tadpole diagrams. They can zoom in on the book and not have to buy it because they have to zoom in and see what's written. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so is it, is it, I think you say somewhere near the start of the book, obviously it's, it's impractical to expect all the textbooks to suddenly overhaul their systems. If they did, they'd probably be out of date in 60 years time anyway. I don't know if you'd agree with that or. Um, mm, well, okay, well that's a, yeah, that's an interesting, you know, Sooner or later, you're going to have to update things. I mean, letting things get, you know, centuries out of date is crazy. It's how orthography happened. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, you're kind of getting... I mean, what you've addressed with that question, I think, is, is the transcriptional thing, the, the symbols. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do think it would be nice if uh, some modifications were made to the established way of transcribing, you know, or British English yeah. um, but th the main purpose of the book doesn't have to be about that at all I mean the, the main purpose of the book is to um, say well look you know here here are these symbols here are these phonemes this is what they actually sound like now that kind of thing yeah. which you always have to do anyway I mean a classic that's example true, yeah. is I mean take uh, the, the, the r consonant Mm. I mean, that's a classic example. So a lot of the time in, it's just transcribed. Yeah, you know, in, in, in English dictionaries, French dictionaries, Spanish dictionaries, German dictionaries, wherever you've got phonemic transcription, um, 
people will, will usually use the, just the normal lowercase letter R. Mm. And so anybody taking the interested in pronunciation is going to have to find out and be told what in that particular language the actual pronunciation of R is. Mm. So you've, <clears throat> there's always going to be some of this, well, you know, it's actually pronounced like this. The dictionaries don't show, show say, aspiration on, you know, per ter ke. Yeah. Um, well, my dictionary, you can see the aspiration on per yeah. ter ke yeah. if you want to. But in general, you don't, and would by default, we don't either. So, um, but you have to tell people if you want to get the pronunciation right, you've got to teach it. So it's, it's unpacking what the symbols tell you is something you've always got to do. Yeah, um, that's true. So it's not necessarily, the book isn't first and foremost a kind of um, call to arms about symbols. Um, it's, it's more... How, how what, to interpret Yeah, how do you interpret the symbols? Yeah. And they have got pretty far away. I mean, we can talk about whether it's a good thing to let the symbols go this far away. Become ab so abstracted from what's... Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things... Yeah, I mean, the, the couple of points you could make is... is I mean, one about Gimson, who came up with the symbols that people use for British English, and another one um, is about comparing systems. So, um, Gimson, A.C. Gimson, he was head of department when I was an undergraduate, so I remember him. Um, you know, he was, he was a great yeah. phonetician, great guy, very nice. Um, and in a sense, what I'm trying to do is to honour his spirit, because right. he kind of discarded Daniel Jones's more simple way of transcribing English, and decided to um, have a more explicit, more realistic, more narrow set of symbols. Mm. So he was the one who came up with the idea of, um, should we go back? He's the one, yeah, he, he came up with the idea of, of using narrower, more detailed symbols. And also he um, was happy to change when he thought they got out of date. So the main example of that is the goat vowel, the O vowel, mm. which was the first element of that diphthong um, was it, back, was it le back? Yeah, letter E. Well, it was the, people use the letter O. Oh, right. And, you know, oh. yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, Daniel Jones, that kind of thing. Um, and by the time, um, by, the, by, by 1962, Gibson published his book. Mm -hmm. So, by then, um, uh, the first part of that diphthong had fronted, you know, to, to something more like schwa. So, he mm -hmm. thought, oh, I'd better change it. And my position is, if you're going to transcribe uh, the system as narrowly as Gimson did, if you're just going to do the kind of thing he did, yeah. and if you're going to try and keep up to date the way he did, well, then this is what the you need to yeah, this, you know, that is this is what you would do. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know for sure, but if Gimson was with us now, you know. He'd certainly see that the way things are right now is not what he was trying to do. I mean, Wells wrote, was it the foreword to the book, who's, who's another phonetician, um, who I think he said something on the lines of, the way I speak is out of date and it's about time somebody, <laughs> not, not in these exact words, but it's about time I was, somebody. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw the, uh, this, the preface that he wrote. Yeah, shocked and touched. Yeah, yeah, really. I mean, very, very. I was, you know, just almost had a little tear in my eye when I read it because it's very complimentary, but also to be so blunt. And, and Peter Roach, the great Peter Roach, also was, wrote some very kind things about the book. And both of them very upfront about about the standard materials being a bit out of date. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that's quite a bold thing for them to do. Well, I mean, it's 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 what scientists have to do, isn't it? You know. If yeah. The state of reality changes, then you describe the way it's changed rather than insisting that it, it you know, this is the correct way of describing it. This yeah, that's the, the scientific is. approach. I suppose EFL isn't, arguably isn't a science. Um, no. Uh, I mean, maybe for some people, but, you know, overall, it's not what you classically think of as a science. So you could say that EFL people aren't really that concerned. And you can also say that phonemic symbols are, you know, they're phonemic, they can be broad, like the letter R. They can so be, yeah. it's not like it's a crime to have symbols that don't exactly match narrowly the no, sounds. No. But as I say, um, 
on the one hand, I was just trying to follow the spirit of Gimson. If you're going yes. to take his kind of approach, it's ironic to me that people want to preserve Gimson's symbols, but they're doing so completely um, against, his, against own. his own methodology yeah. and his own views about being narrow and keeping things up to date. And the other reason, I think, that it's dangerous to let your symbols, your phonemic symbols, drift too far away from physical reality is when you're comparing systems. Mm, yeah. So the moment yeah. you want to compare one language with another, one accent with another, or one historical stage of a linguistic system with another, you're going to get into big trouble if, you, if, if one of those systems is being tra transcribed very unrealistically. Yeah. And so I have to say that one of the, that's one of the main reasons that I, I just I, I feel uncomfortable about having, and it's not all the symbols, of course, it's just some of them, but I feel uncomfortable about having these vowel symbols be so far from, uh, from reality, because it, to me it, it kind of indicates an attitude that only one accent of one language matters. Mm. Why would you ever want yeah. to compare anything? That's, you know, all yeah, Johnny exactly. Foreigner wants is to is to is to is to learn one accent of one language. Yeah, it yeah. seems to me it's a slightly old-fashioned attitude. Is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you'll hear generalizations like, and I and I know a lot of the time it's shorthand for in this specific variety of English or in this specific variety of German. But you'll hear generalizations like, oh, English has this phoneme and Spanish has this phoneme, but something like discounting even the fact that the for example, the English fleece vowel and the Spanish e vowel are phonetically different most of the time, unless mm -hmm. maybe some English speakers pronounce it as yeah. You know, but even discounting that, to say that English has such and such a phoneme and Spanish has such and such a phoneme is wrong because they you know, a phoneme exists in the context of its system. So if, if they're different systems, they're not the same. Yeah. You know, well, like I that's mean, maybe, yes, that's a big. That's big maybe jumping issue. a bit away from the the, the point. I mean, yeah, there are so many things in what you just said that are interesting and can be unpacked. But yeah, I mean, people have this reverence for, for symbols and um, not just a reverence, but also people... Well, the, the, the default thing that people in general do when they look at some kind of writing mm. is, it inter is, is to interpret it in terms of what they know. Yeah. So if they see an IPA symbol that's the same as a letter in their own writing system, the default thing is just to think it's the same thing. Mm. But yeah. I mean, it goes beyond that. So people do that with, they interpret symbols that look like a letter in their language. I mean, like the little capital I, for example. Yeah. You know, the, the, it's understandable. The normal neutral sort of thing that people will do when they see that is to say, oh, well, it's a kind of I, so it's an I. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or take, you know, the, the ash digraph, the AE mm -hmm. digraph. I mean, I, I had the, the privilege to travel around the world and teach people all over the place. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know because people have told me in various parts of the world that lots of people think that that symbol means um, it's written with an A, but you pronounce it like an E. Yeah, that's, I and think that's people literally I believe seen. that, yeah. 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 Oh, Which is how you get, you know, I'm very happy. So. Yeah. And, yes. and some people are just shocked when one of my videos, you is know, is just trying to say that, there yeah. is a difference between the dress vowel and the trap vowel. And yeah. um, I mean, you know, there isn't an accent of English. There isn't a major accent of English where there isn't that contrast. There are yeah. some other contrasts that accents are lacking, like, you know, lots of Americans don't have cot court, mm. you know. Yeah. So, but, but every English speaker's got dress trap. Yeah. yeah, I can't think of any any historical <laughs> accent I know of where they were. Yeah, and and it and it and it maps either. onto the right, you know, letters A and E. It's inc extremely good mapping with the spelling. Yeah, I, I I wonder how common it is for a language to have a distinction between, because um, I'm trying to think between E as in the that IPA character and the ash A kind of, because um, that's a fairly Narrow. It's, I've, one thing I've always wondered, which you might might not mm -hmm. know, is why is there even an ash character in the IPA at all? Because if you look at the IPA vowel chart, there's nothing mirroring it at the back. Is is it just that 
the low vowel ah didn't correspond to what RP speakers were using for the trap vowel, so they came up with another one that was in the middle. Or I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I, 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 I don't think I can give you chapter and verse about the history of the IPA and how right. the decisions were made. But um, if this is responding appropriately, I think it, it, it's clear. Daniel Jones had his primary cardinal vowels, and I think anybody who's really interested in phonetics should learn those. I mean, should learn to, learn to produce them. Learn to produce those. I think it's really a really useful system. So you've got, you know, e, a, 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 and this cardinal number four, this a, which is really very, very close indeed to the contemporary standard Southern British trap vowel. Yeah. Clearly, wasn't the RP trap vowel. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I think the, the, it was felt that it wasn't quite close enough to be well represented by Cardinal Three Air, though for a lot of speakers it obviously was. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, quite why, quite why the decision was not made to have uh, Cardinal Two, lowercase e, for the dress vowel and just cardinal three for the trap vowel yeah quite why that decision was made i don't know so in other words i've completely failed to answer your question oh, that's really, all right no it's a, it's a good contemplative i like, think for a, enough speak for enough speakers it wasn't close as as close as cardinal three yeah oh, I, what i mean is rather than well, i i was i think i was more asking sort of whether the um it's, it's just, I think it's just an un unanswerable question at this point, but whether, whether the system itself, whether the fact that there is a symbol, a discrete symbol for that, rather than just using the three with a, you know, slower diacritic, whether that's just purely because English speakers were a lot of the people using the IPA and they needed this discrete symbol, or if, if it had been some other language, they would have just used three with a, or they would have just approximated it using it. Yeah, I, I mean, know. well, I mean, I think, if 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 the if the Brits if the RP speakers hadn't been you know crucially involved in creating the IPA, I think it would be a lot different. Yeah, I think it <laughs> a hell of a lot different. Wouldn't be a load of Roman yeah. characters for one thing. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, but yeah. you've got to. So yeah, I think there's a lot yeah. of Anglo-centric things in there. Um, yes, but I, I think yeah, I, th I think this rather curious trap valve was 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 why. It, uh, enough reason was felt to introduce this. I mean, generally, you, you made a comparison with the back, and I think it's, uh, in a very broad sense, it's, it's generally the case that la languages around the world tend to make more distinctions in the front vowels than the back vowels, so that's, that's a kind of partial answer that's, to your yeah, question as well. Sense. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. I, I always wondered if that's, is, is the, the back of the vowel space, is there less space there, or is it just that there's less acoustic? Oh, I, I, my my money would be on on, on, a, on a, an acoustic explanation, not right. an articulatory one. Okay, but maybe it's a bit of both. Could be a bit of both. To look at um, at some point. There's a nice website. I don't know if you've seen it, which I'll link. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a it's a interactive picture of the inside of the vowel space from the from the side with a tongue that you can move around to produce different yeah. qualities. So yeah. maybe that would be an interesting place to look because obviously the actual vowel space isn't shaped like that. It's Kind of just a massive blob in the mouth that's approximated yeah. by. I mean, if yeah, if you put the quadrilateral on a on a on a on an MRI or X-ray image, um, yeah, you do get that sloping, that long sloping front. So mm. I mean, okay. as I say, my I think I would expect the acoustic explanation to be uh, to have more weight, but yeah, there's there, there's there's more room to manoeuvre at the front. Right. Okay. I think that's okay. right. I will. Hang on. Very jankily and without any finesse whatsoever. See what what else I have. Um, oh yes, um, an another thing you introduce in the book is the idea of a sort of anti-clockwise vowel shift, oh, yeah. which which um, accounts for a lot of the differences between the traditional RP vowel system and the modern, um, the, the common southeastern English vowel system today. Um, so. It's if you have a good ear, which you obviously do, noticing that, that things aren't the same as they were 50 years ago is one thing, but then systematizing that into a sort of shift, or noticing that it's 
seems to be some kind of change shift or um, whatever you, you characterise it as is another thing. Sort of noticing this vowel is lower and in turn this vowel is lower and in turn this vowel is more backed. Is, is, was there a point that you sort of started to notice this vowel being more backed is related to probably related to this vowel being more, you know? Uh, I mean, I, d I don't think there was a kind of eureka moment, or may mm. may maybe there was, putting it together with, um, I mean, I, th I, th I think um, you can look at the, you can look at these changes um, as having different subparts, so the, the lowering of the front vowels and right. um, raising of the back vowels, you can sort of think of them independently. Right. Um, and also the timing is interesting. I mentioned before about um, Gimson changing the goat vowel symbol. To um, be uh, central. Yeah, from O to O. So this fronting of uh, the back goat vowel to central. Um, well, clearly, you know, Gimson thought, well, we'd, we'd better represent that in 1962. Yeah. But, you know, you can see that uh, <coughs> um, the same things happened with the goose vowel. But so it seems that the goose vowel change happened later. Um, what the, so that there's a, it's a diphthong with a more central. Yeah. So, so you have, yeah, you have this fronting or centering of of not of both of, of both o and o yeah. ooh, um, oops, yeah, so we have o, o and o in, in conservative rp um, the, the so there seems to have been some sort of, they don't seem, it doesn't seem to have happened to the same degree simultaneously yeah um, but i think some of it's kind of obvious because you know if you go through basic um, phonetic training you know you're, you're going to become aware very rapidly of things like differences between you know, our accent if I can describe us as having a broadly similar yeah. accent and say New Zealand you know mm, you can see yeah. New Zealand's got the, got the front vowels all you know, squished up relatively speaking yeah. so you, you it's 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 you expect you don't expect vowels to just go wandering around on their own you expect things yeah. to have knock-on effects I but yeah, I suppose that's yeah. That that my question is probably reflective of the fact that I learned about chain shift at the same time as I was learning about phonetics. So I realizing that you know yeah. came at a similar time. Whereas if you if you've learned about phonetics and then ten or twenty or however many years later yeah. you start to notice this, then it's like oh, of course that's going to have a knock-on effect if it's if it's been hanging around long enough. But the I think. The, I'll, I'll, I'll use this as a reminder for myself to, to put this in, but I think a good example of the O to O difference is King George the Fifth and the Queen, because I think King, I, I looked at this in a, a video on the accents of monarchs, and I think George the Fifth fairly consistently has O, which I found really weird, because I associate that with an, with an American accent. I take it as a good omen. I know he would want us to enjoy Christmas. Oh. Because most of the RP accents I've heard have been from recordings from the 60s and 70s when the, the O or O pronunciation was already fairly entrenched. Yes, um, I mean, there, yeah, I, I mean, there are, mm, I'm not sure how much I, I, I kind of know about how all of this happened, but um, yes, we, you have an, an association with conservative RP and a, and a very front goat vowel, mm. you, know, I, you know, I know, I think I know. The, the Queen has quite a front uh, I think so. Goat vowel. Um, so, yeah, I, um, on the other hand, um, there is this all, all going back, you know, that, yeah. um, so I think presumably both of them existed at the same time. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it reminds me of Scouts. I'm a Merseyside, Merseysider, right. you know, and, and you've got there's the more conservative scouts. That's true, you've got you, all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't know, I don't know. you've got yeah. this one, all, and then you've got this O oh thing yeah, that's, that's kind of, I think, become more, uh, has, has spread and become more common in my lifetime. I think I can, rem I feel I remember that, maybe not exactly appearing, but beginning to be used more. I and wondered. I, yeah. I, yeah. It, sort of it seemed to me that when I was a uh, teenager, uh, Growing up on Merseyside, that this this O, I, I thought of as a being a kind of younger female characteristic. This is something I I, I think I noted this in a video I did a while ago on Scouse that, mm. that I've noticed the old O thing, and I thought O was 
I associate that more with women. Um, yeah, I think it's not not exclusively now. I mean, yeah, I think you can get a football player with you know I don't know now. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I, I my gut feeling is that um, you didn't get that back in the seventies. Right. Uh, That's interesting to get. To what extent is old? You know, the old the old kind of you know I think of you know, old correspondingly as being maybe maybe an old older male, male thing. thing. Yeah. I mean, how um, you know how is 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 how recessive is is all in scouts now? I don't really, I don't know. I'm, I don't know either, to be honest. Like, if I think about it, I should say, I, you know, I haven't lived there for a long time, and, and no, no, you know, so, 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 you know, people who know better, you know, please, I'm sure please be let us that, know. <laughs> that comment. There's, a, there's a, often people who pick up on things and comment, but um, I think having having gone to uni in Preston which is obviously not Liverpool, but it's near-ish Liverpool. Um, a lot of Scousers went to the same university as me. And I think I've, I've definitely heard oh in men my age. Oh, I don't think it's um, gone. I don't think it's gone. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's, it's vanished as much as RP oh has vanished. I think RP I don't oh, know. I can't, I, I've never heard that from a living speaker in my whole life, I don't think. No. Um, but that Whereas, video of mine, you mentioned the recent vowel one. I, I, I've stolen a clip from an old uh, Harry Enfield sketch uh, if you if yeah. you do remember uh, harry enfield does that mean anything to you oh no yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said, mr chomley warner used to do these wonderful uh yeah he did the scouts as well um but uh you know, they, they used to do these wonderful uh fake very old convincing RP I think. newsreels yeah and um and one of the things that they got was was the was the back goat vowel yeah uh they have, you know, do you think we should still be on the gold standard? So that, I mean, that's doubly amusing, partly because of the back um, goat fowl, but also the fact that it's pre the um, goat alophony, pre the um, the the rebacking of the, the vowel before dark oh, L. Yeah. So, so you know, elf. gold standard sounds you know incredibly archaic. Yeah, compared with gold, honest, gold standard today. Something like gold standard sounds quite old as well, even though that's that's without the allophonic backing. Yeah, it does. I it does. With, I, I I I wonder how old fashioned I sound. I mean, if I say gold to you, gold, how old fashioned do I sound? Um, because I <coughs> don't really have the goat allophony. I mean, I think I have it to okay. a small degree. Yeah. Um, but. I, it's not a big ch the difference between goat and goal for me is not yes, a huge I one but i i hope i don't sound ridiculous when i say no you don't goal. sound ridiculous at all i mm. i'm trying to think whether i could whether i would be surprised if someone my age said it like that i don't think i would but i'd think they were i'd expect it to pattern with other features that i'd think of as conservative like i'd expect it to pattern with near being a diphthong for example that that kind of thing because i've noticed the kind of people where near is still a diphthong tend to i i, I noticed oh and yeah well you brought more. up near now near near is to me is the most fascinating vowel of all because it's just so complicated and i and i agree but i think you've probably got more to say about it than i have well you've definitely far, far too much far too much no but it's thing. very very yeah complicated complicated because i think there's because you when you say some you say some people have near, some people have near. Well, I think a lot of people have got both. But the, I think the distribution is varying. Yeah, yeah, I think I have both. Well, well, then, then it gets even more complicated for me because I don't think, um, well, my accent's messed up. But in terms of my native accent, um, uh, my native kind of uh, Merseyside, Merseyside accent, but not broad, non-broad Merseyside accent, mm. I don't think I... Ha, have or had in my native accent a near phoneme at all. I think what what I what I have or had is yeah. fleece plus schwa yeah, ear. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I think to me, um, uh, in its in in its full form, yeah, it's disyllabic or what John Wells. I love this term of John Wells. Very syllabic, a very syllabic form, because um, so I, in my in my accent I would have near. Mm. but nearly mm, okay rather than nearly and do you think those are underlyingly the same phonemically underlying yeah i think it's a, a smoothing effect yeah right and i think it ha what i've just described 
I'm not saying that that applies to you know everybody in southern Britain, but I think it applies to a larger degree than people realise. Well, I mean, well, for, I mean, if you go to, I, I don't know if it's still there, I think it's uh, the Cambridge Online Dictionary, I think it's Cambridge, and this is in one of my blog articles, the clips, of, I think it's Cambridge, might be Macmillan, but, but I, don't, I, I, I don't want to say it's just a, an obscure, unusual thing, I think it's very typical, mm. but you've got the RP speaker demonstrating uh, the words near and nearly, and it's it's like me, you know. You click near, you click on the nearly. audio, and one is near, near, and I don't see how you can. I mean, syllables are tough things. You can't always hear syllables, mm. but it seems to me that sounds like, um, Two syllables. you know, it sounds like somebody saying, "Could you move your knee a bit?" Yeah, you know, near. Yeah, yeah, I see what you it mean. It sounds like yeah. that to me. But when you go to nearly, so nearly. So to me, near sounds like two syllables, and mm. nearly sounds like two syllables, and it's the same speaker. And you get the same kind of thing with retire. This is in my blog article too. Retire and retirement, retirement. where they both sound yeah. like three syllables to me. I think I, think I would say retirement, but I've You think that's four syllables, your... retirement. You think it's four syllables, do you? Retirement. That's a good, I'm really not sure now. I never thought about that, retirement. I, I think underlyingly it's four syllables, like, I think it's ri ti uh, well, ri ti yeah, man. Well, yeah, that's the same, same for me, underlyingly, I think it's ri ti yeah, man, and also ni ya li, but yeah. um, not, not in terms of the surface pronunciation. No. And my point, of course, in terms of my, my you know, my, my typical moaning about transcription. Um, so I'll check that's still recording. Is it still recording? I'm going to turn it off and on again to... Oh, it wasn't. Oh no. I wonder how much it's not recorded. Maybe it didn't record any. I've done that kind of thing in the past. It was. I, I checked before, and it was. There was a red thing. This is. This has been recording the whole time, anyway. So oh. we'll we'll just paste. <laughs> we'll paste some pretty <laughs> pictures of birds over the but top. The, uh, the old. Uh, um, the old um, test card. This is the girl this with is the clown. Oh yeah, the BBC. Yeah. <laughs> the BBC <laughs> test card. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to check that's in focus. And I'm definitely going to leave this bit in so that people can see the behind the scenes. Exciting. Yeah, this see is me how wiping my nose. Um, right. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, what were we talking about? Retirement. Oh, retirement, <laughs> yes. Um, oh, and I was saying, yes, in terms of my. my, my complaining about transcription mm. um, this isn't to do I think some with being out of date so much as with being consistent right um, I mean obviously you know all the dictionaries are going to say it's it's re retirement they're yeah. going to have they're going to have what you could call the wire vowel or the fire vowel or right. the triftong some people call this I don't believe I don't believe in no. but um, just to yeah, we know what we're talking about. This Aya thing, all the dictionaries are going to tell you that that's disyllabic. But it amazes me. So many things about the near vowel amaze me. It amazes me that nobody seems to really have entertained this for near, despite the fact that if you listen to old conservative RP recordings, you hear something that very definitely is what the symbol suggests. A lax yeah. beginning gliding <coughs> into a schwa. Ear, ear, which yeah. sounds fairly old fashioned now. Yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah. Especially the more the more you the more emphasis you put on the second element, the more old-fashioned it is. So now, yeah. now the, the, oh, the, the, the shorter that, yeah. the first element gets, the more old-fashioned it is. And then, of course, you get pronunciations of yeah, you know, like um, well, yeah, yeah. That yeah. used to, you can get that transcribed like that as her, like, yeah, uh, nurse yeah. Vowel, yeah. But so there's a change. This sort of yeah to ear yeah, to ear. Yeah ear ear but for a long time for a long long time for decades um many 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 mainstream rp speakers mm. have said not near and here but near and here yeah. and if you go to most of the major dictionaries the audio clips tend to have here yeah. near yeah. and that kind of thing and and the only reference like apart from my own <coughs> stuff the only reference i've come across to that being thought of as disyllabic, and people can you know, tell us that I've missed a, a load of references, but the only one I noticed is uh, John Wells in Accents of English describing 
north of England and uh, saying, and I, th I think he got, I think as it, as it turned out, I think he got this wrong, right. but observing that a lot of people in the north have ear, as I, as I say, mm. I, I did, but claiming that it's, say, he says something like, but this is clearly recessive in the face of ear. What, I think that's totally the wrong way around. Is that in the north or in yeah. the south? Recessive? Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's not talking about RP. The north at all. He's talking, of, yeah, but so, I mean, I'm not going to criticise the great John Wells, my wonderful oh, no, teacher. Of course, of course not. Yeah? Um, but I think, in the, I, I think, yeah, that I don't know why he said he thought that ear was going out of fashion and being replaced by ear. No. I think, for, on the contrary, it seems to me that it, you know, well, I don't know whether it spread from the north to the south, but... Possibly. Yeah, and why why people don't seem to have entertained this disyllabic or very syllabic pronunciation for ear in the south in whatever you RP modern RP whatever you want to call it. Mm. I honestly don't know, but I've got a long I've got several long blog articles about this. One of them um, citing um, a Coldplay song. Um, every tear, every, every tear. Uh, every teardrop is a waterfall. Right. So you've got every tear sung on two notes, and then every teardrop, teardrop yes. two notes. So to me, that's kind of some kind of evidence of I that think same thing going on. That's I just like what you hear in the dictionary. Imagining Arctic monkeys' songs, who are, I think, from sort of maybe Sheffield kind of area, mm -hmm. who definitely say here, and and descriptions from the Cumbrian is the dialect that I've sort of looked at most his diachronically. Yeah. And Buya Brilliot, who was a Swedish linguist des describing Cumbrian in... Sorry, who was that? Buya Brilliot. Okay. Um, in, I think it was 1913. Mm. But he, he, he seemed seems to have been a pretty good... Like, he noticed things like the fact that Turt and Dirt are dentalised before alveolar taps and stuff like that. So he mm. seems to have had a keen ear for it. And he described here as a triff song. Um, again, don't believe in triff songs, but like... As you know, E plus a. Uh, um, I think he. I think he went into a little discussion of oh, is it a trip song or is it two, you know is it two mm. syllables? Is it the police vowel plus the schwa? Dear Guatemalan, Yeah. Um, so I I kind of, I kind of feel that of all the symbols, um, the this the the near symbol with this small the, the cap I. Mm. And uh, yeah, I I feel that it's kind of got away with murder because not in the sense that it, it's it's clearly wrong, but that mm. people don't seem to have discussed very much the tensing of the first element. Yeah. But I mean, if you compare that with say happy tensing, which people have spoken about a lot, of you know, it's been widely discussed how um, conservative happy you know, became happy for, for, yeah. for most people. That's massively discussed. But um, people, there hasn't been anything like the same discussion of the, of, it seems to me, it's hardly a coincidence that mm. this also tensed in ear. And you yeah. could also say that the same thing happened with the, with the diphthong um, off glides, um, where, um, in, in old recordings of RP, you quite often hear things like a and I. Oh, and I see oi. what you mean, yeah. And, so and they're those, fairly so central. The, yeah, but so that the off glides are much tenser than they were. I've, much I've, less lax. That was one of the things <clears throat> when I was sort of learning to transcribe phonetically that I had difficulty with was why why those was you know those diphthongs were transcribed with fairly lax off glides because I I couldn't hear. The thing is, in some accents, I can hear that it's. Yes, in accents. some accents. Like Cockney, for example, I think older Cockney speakers, I think, will some, yeah, I, think I rather than I, um, dependent on speaker again. But I, I could hear it there, but I, I couldn't hear it in my own accent. I. I well, thank you for yeah. thank you for saying that because I mean I've <laughs> because that's not had this ex it, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I remember I remember ar arriving at UCL and and you know in my first week being handed the phoneme sheet. Um, and looking at it and sort of seeing these uh, discrepancies between, well, phonemic discrepancies between it and me, because there are a couple of phonemic differences between me and RP. Um, but also just the, the more narrow detail and looking at these off glides and thinking, what, 
A, you know, I, I, what I, what I. I. <laughs> and, and then uh, over the years, as I became a teacher, finding, you know, a lot of the, usually the better, you know, usually the, the more gifted phoneticians amongst the students that I was teaching, saying oh, exactly what you've just said, you know, right. saying, you know, maybe coming up to me at the end of the class and saying, sorry, I don't, I, I'm probably a stupid question, but could you just tell me why these symbols are just you know, transcribed with it on the end? And yeah. so loads of people are completely flummoxed yeah. by that. But yeah, so, and of course now, I mean, I would say there's, there are, you can attack that on, on various grounds, but it's not as if nobody should ever do it. As you, as you say, you know, there are plenty there are of accents. accents where it did, yeah. yeah, like, like happy tense, there's plenty, you know, north of happy, happy, happy. happy. Yeah. there's plenty, yeah. you know, plenty of accents, you get it. And, you know, something is out there everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's one of one of the things is you know, learnt to be careful never to say, oh, there's no accent which does this, there's no accent which does that, because yeah, e even dangerous. the meat, meat merger hadn't completely, I th it's probably accents now in, in Ireland that don't quite have the meat meat merger and that have, I think there's, there's it's something like there's a meat mate merger, but there's not a meat meat merger or something. And in a lot of the North, um, I think it was Hilary Pritchard, but I'll put, put a thing up on screen if it wasn't, um, recently described the northern english vowel pattern um ac across the six northern counties that were yeah. described in the um alton the, is it the alton survey mm -hmm. the, of the 50s and 60s i think so and said that there were you know there were dialects there where a, a consistent distinction was made between meat and meat um at that point probably not anymore mm. I, I don't know whether that's so it's it, yeah you need to um, you need to do one of these chats in future with my mate John Harris, right? Uh, my friend and colleague, Professor John Harris, mm. um, of uh, UCL. Uh, you know we've uh, written stuff together on, on phonology and stuff like that. But he knows uh, masses and masses about um, uh, the history of uh, English and ac accents of English. And, right. um, yeah. So he'll he would. He's the, he's the he's 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 your man, yeah. I will I'll try and get in contact with him. I'm I'm always conscious of overburdening people's inboxes. So I just like I don't want to. But then I suppose I sort of go through stages of oh should I contact this person? There's a plane that's gonna. Sort of worried about being you know buzzed by yes. by Gimsonians. <laughs> They've heard. They've hacked into the panel. I shouldn't say that even as a joke, because as I said before, I think of myself as the real Gimson. Yeah, yeah. I don't think a lot of the people who follow the symbols like that would describe themselves as Gimsonians. No. They probably just... Yeah, I was... And it, another thing is that, I, I don't know if you found this, but I think the smoothing of ear, like, there's nothing like it in, reflected in air as far as I can think, there's no e. In at least in southeastern English, there's no, I can't think of a other than maybe in like Cockney, like for example there, you know, where you, you almost have... Oh yes, well cer certainly, yeah, in Cockney or Estuary, Essex, whatever you want to call it, yes. That's, uh, yeah, the, 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 you have a different there, but, for sure. Yeah, but other, otherwise I Loads think of speakers. there's a bit of difference in terms of, for example, now people my age who, who have a similar accent to me, I, I could eat like I, I think I have ear in certain situations, but I can't imagine anyone with a similar accent to me saying air. At, well, uh, yes, say yes, we're yes, yes. I'm, I'm not articulating this very well, but like having ear but air seems to be a common. Yeah, that's, that's clearly not 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 positions. not simultaneous historically speaking. Yeah. So the 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 um, uh, yeah. So 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 ear becoming ear and air becoming becoming air that that's not at all simultaneous and in, in my case of course it's a, quite a, my native accent it's a, it's a sort of different situation where i've definitely got a square vowel but i'm not sure i got a near vowel at all would you have you ever had the square nurse merger yourself no no um yeah so that's what why my accent isn't broad so i see okay i've all um, my parents uh, parents. <laughs> my parents, you know, my, pa my parents uh, had, didn't 
have those merged. Right, okay. Um, so, of course, most, most people where I grew up, um, you know, did have, them. Did, did have them merged, yes, but uh, uh, not me. Um, I also, I've, I have um, uh, the uh, foot strut split. That's, yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. That's the obvious one. So yeah. I've always had that, but that one's interesting because that that is one where um, not not frequently, but every now and then I make a, I make speech errors with foot strut. But, but it's real. It's it's been there all my life. Is it? Does it go? Both well, I get ways? the wrong one. And um, no, I I'd use uh, I'd use, use foot for foot, 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 foot for strut. Yeah. Interesting thing growing up is that my dad has the foot, he doesn't have the foot strut split because he's from Cumbria. Okay. Um, and he, very occasionally there'd be a moment where I, I, I would always, I think I would always have reported growing up that he said the two vowels differently um, because because I said them differently and I consider them to be separate vowels. But obviously when you, when you ask him, does cut rhyme with foot, he'll say yeah. What's the word for that? The floor. No, the this shoe. What's inside the shoe? Foot. And what do you do with scissors? Cut. And do those words rhyme? Yes. Foot. Cut. Foot. Cut. Per perceptually, I, it never occurred to me. But it, you know, there were situations where I'd say, "What's that bird?" and he'd say, "It's a rook," and I'd say, "Oh, it's a ruck." <laughs> and he was yeah. like, "No, it's a rook." So he clearly could tell that I was doing like, yeah, it's. Strange. One parent with the merge and one parent, well, not the merger, One parent with the split and one parent without it. And yeah, the I, fact that you don't even clock that for him, these are the same phoneme until you start learning about it. Um, yeah, I had a there was a, a teacher at school who used to talk about books, the books. The books. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder if do you think that's a dialectal thing or hyper? Yeah. I think hypercorrection. Not sure. Yeah. I think it was hypercorrection. I think so. Yeah. I thought about getting northern friends and seeing whether they can um, whether they can report to me which which of the two vowels they'd expect me to use and give in a list of words and see how well they do but I, I don't know um, but yeah I'm trying to think what else to, what, another thing I was going to say there was a, I, I said about this over email there was a somebody called Stephen who sent me a message um, praising your book oh. and saying it it, it was <laughs> finally a load of things clicked in terms of you know um symbols not being entirely phonetically appropriate even though, as you say it, if it's a phonemic transcription it doesn't really have to be but um one of the things i assume he i'm assuming he rather than they or she but um said was um about l vocalization and you have a bit in the book obviously on l vocalization which for people who don't know is the tendency to pronounce post vocalic l which is a sort of velarized l in our in our accents i think for you as well um as uh all so like pull becomes pull and pow could become pow um could you say that one again pow pow <laughs> your your your, un, your unvocalized one sounds quite oh, vocalized oh, to me. it probably is <laughs> pow Pal, pal. I think I think what it is. I think what it is is it's a velarized L with lip rounding. Pal. But and maybe the, the, maybe it is the lip maybe actually. the lip round lip rounding is uh, masking it a bit for me or masking I, I, my my bath bath fouls all over the place. What you you sometimes have the merger. Oh yeah, it's, it's a hopeless. split rather than a merger. Yeah. I keep thinking complete yeah. mess. Yes. That's an, an, an interesting one. I don't know if you know about the history of the the lock cloth. Um, split, cloth. but it's yes. cloth, yeah. <laughs> it, it it maps pretty nicely onto the trap bath split in terms of what the environments it occurs in, and that yeah. always interested me. The fact that the having a distinction between lot and cloth is almost non-existent nowadays, whereas trap and bath is well. It depends who you're talking common. about. How um, do you mean, like like the Queen or something? Well, or South Africans as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, South yeah. Africans. I've I've heard say off. Yeah. and. Um, also, yeah, well, North American English, it's, it just doesn't or match, it doesn't like, yeah, line up true. with, 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 with I if I can call I it our said, accent, it's not yeah, I think <laughs> similar, similar enough. Both 
Yeah, that's perfectly right. describable you in this by the system described in this fantastic book. But yeah, I hadn't thought about American accents. That was that was yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about your intuitions about L vocalization because this it's I'm fascinated by fascinated and terrified by by L vocalization because you know in its fullest form it's just going to have these really drastic effects on the vowel system. It is, you know. Yes. So <laughs> there goes my book. <laughs> That's well, at least you mentioned it. It's like it's as you were saying, which I never noticed, because R and L, well, they're starting to pattern very similarly, and they're both kind of liquid consonants and, and all this, so they pattern kind of similarly to begin with. But the the idea that and read the book to get a fuller sort of description of this but the, the idea that L is going the same way as R did in the sense of well we don't we don't completely understand how um, post vocalic R um, disappeared in southeastern English to begin with um, there, there, there are good sort of descriptions of I'll, I'll put actual references on screen but at one point it was pronounced stronger at the starts of syllables and weaker at the end and we don't know if that's r versus r or if it's r versus you know nothing um but yeah the the idea that l is going the same way as r in the at the end of a syllable it's starting to become a vowel and possibly will disappear eventually and this is something i noticed in a friend this is not something i've seen in many people but um my friend josh I'm sure won't mind me saying he he has L vocalization in most situations mm -hmm. and in some phrases for example like there'll be another one soon or we'll go tomorrow or something like that mm -hmm. if he's speaking quickly he'll say there'll be another one soon or we'll go tomorrow oh. have you heard that so that well now you mention it yes <laughs> so that so that Wow, so you could get you, you see, have grammatical in. effects, possibly. Potent well, I, I was thinking more that, that there's not even a vowel corresponding to an underlying L phoneme. Whereas at the moment, if you said something like they'll, the, the, the word vowel, I would say, clearly corresponds to a L phoneme. But if, you, if you're saying there be another one. Soon, there be, yeah. There be, there be, yeah. there be giants. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, that's great. You know, I hadn't really thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't think it's common at all, but I think it's the nat possibly a natural mm. mix. I think I'm going to start hearing it all over the place now. I, I, I don't hear it much, um, but it's definitely something I've heard from people other than him. Just the, yeah, the yeah. idea that at the, in the same way as for a long time, well, I mean, even in RP, ear, the schwa is, you could argue that the schwa is a realisation of an underlying r. Would you say that's right? Yeah, I mean, that's it's a, it's a theoretical. I think it's, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think phonetics can resolve, no, <coughs> resolve that one. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in phonology, but I'm like, I have more of a phonetics hat than, yeah. a, than a phonological hat. I think I probably do as well. I prefer, because it's... I, I I'm not disparaging phonology. No, 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 no I'm just saying, you know, it's like too hard for me, basically. <laughs> that's like what I did. The, the I did so much it, work yeah. with John Harris. He does the he does the theoretical phonology, and that's I interesting. I sort of dance around in the background, trying to you know fill it out with some phonetics. But when you, th I mean, in terms of historical linguistics and trying to make reconstructions of you know past pronunciation and stuff like that, phonetics yeah. is the interesting bit to me because that's what you hear. Um, and obviously, understanding the underlying phonology is helpful in which words fit into which lexical set and which mm -hmm. what, what would speakers report with the same sound and stuff like that. Um, like at what point, if, if trap and bath is started off as an allophonic thing, which presumably it did, at what point would speakers start to report that there were different vowels in them versus when there actually were, yeah. you know, if you, if you analysed it on like a spectrogram or something. Well, I mean, they're not. Mu I mean, they're not mutually exclusive at all. I mean, you can be passionately interested in, in, in phonological theory and, and you know what, trying to find generalizations about what's going on. Absolutely, but I mean, I think you and I share a passion for you know surface detail, the dirt. Yeah, you know, I think and, so. and yeah. that's um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and 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 it's so relevant because you do need to 
dig down into into the detail of what the, the surface detail, well, dig down into the surface yeah. detail. You know what I'm trying to say. You know, Get you on have, pick it. Yeah. Go into exactly. the actual detail rather than yeah. Yeah, you know, you can be come up with a theory of evolution, but you know, but you know, the, the, it rests on all this infinity of, of, of detail. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Like Endlessly like detailed recordings of what was going on. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, L vocalizations fascinating. I mean, it's so, um, and there are, you know, it's 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 ongoing in so many different ways, and. Um, yeah, I'd be curious, sometime at least, to find out about what you think's going on in you, because you're somewhere on that continuum. Yeah, it's, um, I think think about it a lot. I think it's... Yeah, I'd have to... The, the only problem is it, it, it really requires um, recordings of myself when I don't know I'm being recorded. Yeah. So unless I ask a friend, can <coughs> you just record me when I'm talking and not tell me? Which I could do, but it's... I mean, I notice increasingly um, people who don't have um, linking L, for want of a better word. So, um, oh, so like so, it yeah. So for a long time, you know, you would have people who would say, um, "Feel for feel, you know, feel mm. no, I don't feel well." Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, feel but feeling. Mm. So you know, the L is there oh, before the so vowel. Oh, so they would say feeling. Or yeah, but increase it. Well, no, I'm not, not sure not, about not the ing is but not, but certainly before say another word. So, you, lots and lots of people nowadays are saying, you know, I can't feel it. Yeah, or like with with yeah, you know. I can't uh, think of an example. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the the vocalised L before a, a vowel. Would you say that it's a glide doing the work of where, what the L used to do, <laughs> like feel, like the work, the work as a glide, or, or or is it is that going too far? No, I mean, I think it's, yeah, that's exactly, well, it would be the same as, um, um, I, I can't, you know, I, I can see it. I mean, yeah. I would say E has got a glide on the end of it, so yeah, you sort of see so. it, and you know, I can do it. And so you get things like, you know, um, I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is, that is strange, because it's starting to pattern as if it's a... So when that happens, is it, is it now a diphthong? I mean, is it now this a diphthong? One of the things the people, the uh, person Stephen asked was uh, about the, whether these things are, are diphthongs. And I sort of, I, I thought to myself in a situation like the word pow, if it became pow, there's probably a phonetic difference between the, pa, the, the ow in pow and the ow in like sow, for example, as in a female pig. Is there a point that they become phonetically the same and at that point this is maybe a bit theoretical but at that point do they also become phonologically the same or is it two different well it's certainly possible yeah a, i mean converging yeah. um because you can have two different two different phonemes that are realized the same way can't you like bitter and bitter in the u.s both being bitter oh yeah. no no actually i think the vowel, there's a vowel different like a, a length lengthening before well they can be i think they can be neutralized i think they I think can they, be neutralized yeah. i mean like you've got um um with l vocalization you've got some there, there are some it's it's usually a back thing so it, it's usually the l vocalizing to some kind of ooh type thing yeah. i mean that's what you get in cockney and glasgow it's what you get in um history of polish and mm. brazilian yeah. portuguese you know brazil and, um, oh, and yeah, and old French, or I've, I think it's. Uh, I'm not sure if old French is the right label, but if you think of so Latin salve, salvare, obviously vocalised in old French to salve, that's yeah. where the spelling gets stuck. And in Cumbrian, and as then well, it turns yeah. into sauv. The pronunciation yeah. becomes sauv later. There's a, in parts of Northern English, there's a. <clears throat> would I? I don't know if I don't know if they were ever actually merged. You'd have to get a speaker from about. 90 years ago to, to, to confirm it um, but um, colt as in a horse and court as in past tense of catch because that was pronounced colt after um, the ch disappeared right and then it's, it seems like l was vocalized in words like colt gout which was a, a, a an old word for a pig and stuff like that so you end up with colt goat uh, and yeah. stuff like that and well, I, yeah, yeah, and there's all kinds of, I mean, you've got historic uh, things like half, you know, half, mm, Sherlock Holmes, true. you've got lots and lots of 
um, egg yolk. So there's there's the, the there's different kinds of, 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 mm. um, of vocalized owls. But you can also get apparently um, front L vocalization. So the normal, the kind we normally think about is oh, a like dark L. E. Yeah. Like e. mm. So apparently in German, you've got um, varieties of German where, um, say, solch zol, zol, such, mm. solche <coughs> becomes solche. Zol, and that that That's is really neutralized with with S E U C H E, so like, that is apparently a neutralization. That one, though, like that, one's, that one's from Wikipedia. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure people would like would report it anyway. Like I, I I noticed in German a lot that when I said halt, didn't stop, it sounded a lot like height. Or when other people said halt, it sounded a lot like height, yeah. which which is like a suffix like hood in English, like fatherhood or something like that. Um, do, do you want another water? Yeah, maybe, thing? maybe. Yes, I'll, I'll yes. pause for a moment. Well, oh yeah, I'll pause.